Perhaps it affected them in such a way that like everything else that's filtered through the Hollywood Jewish consciousness, they felt they could not, they better not, express it. At this time, only two films on anti-Semitism came out of Hollywood. Both were made by non-Jews. You see, because they made 50 or 60 pictures a year, they always made four or five what they call prestige pictures. I could go to them and say, look, I've got a thing here that may not make any money, but it's a prestige picture. The critics are going to like it, and the, the intellectuals are going to like it, and you're going to get a lot of credit for making this kind of a picture because it has something to say. And just as often as not, you could talk them into it, as long as there weren't too many of them. We wanted to make uh, Crossfire, which is the first picture ever made about anti-Semitism. You know, we didn't know whether it was going to make any money or not. We didn't know whether anybody would want to listen to a preachment on anti-Semitism or not, which is why we made a murder mystery out of it. Uh, strangely enough, none of the three of us, the writer, the producer, nor I, none of us was Jewish. Thomas Finley was killed in 1848 just because he was an Irishman and a Catholic. It happened many times. Maybe that's hard for you to believe, Leroy, but it's true. And last night, Joseph Samuels was killed just because he was a Jew. Do you see any difference, Leroy? Any difference at all? Hating is always the same, always senseless. One day it kills Irish Catholics, the next day Jews, the next day Protestants, the next day Quakers. It's hard to stop. It can end up killing men who wear striped neckties. There seems to be some mistake because we don't have a free room in the entire hotel. But if you'd like, perhaps I can fix you up at the Brewster Hotel down near the station. I'm not staying at the Brewster. Look, I'm Jewish and you don't take Jews. That's it, isn't it? I never said that. If you don't accept Jews, say so. Don't raise your voice to me, Mr. Green. You speak a little more quietly, please. Do you or don't you? Mr. Green, I'm a very busy man. Now, if you want me to phone for a cab or room at the Brewster, I'll do so. Otherwise... Otherwise, what? Gentleman's Agreement centers on the story of a Gentile magazine writer, played by Gregory Peck, who pretends to be a Jew so he can write an expose on anti Semitism in America. This film was also made by a non Jew, Daryl F. Zanuck. There's a very famous scene in there based on a very famous incident in which supposedly the Jewish moguls got together and went to Zanuck whose studio was producing the film, and said, we will pay you a million dollars to destroy all the prints of this film. This is too incendiary. Let us handle it. And Zanuck said no, immediately went back to his office and wrote that scene in. Mr. Green is going to do a series on anti-Semitism for us. Really? Again? Not again. For the first time, we're going to split it wide open. Mind my saying, as an old friend, I think it a very bad idea, John. It's the worst, the most harmful thing you can possibly do now. Not at all. Why is it a harmful idea? Because it'll only stir it up more. That's why. Let it alone. We'll handle it in our own way. The hush-hush way? Oh, I don't care what you call it. Let it alone. You can't write it out of existence. We've been fighting it for years. We know from experience the less talk... The hush-hush way. It's been 17 years, and... We don't want to talk about the love, the light, the love, the bright, in the one and only way here in our modern day, the blatant, obvious, humanly impossible ways, and for lace, and the good news for who, nobody could kill, pill, or dill, or the one and only.